I'm Jonathan Phelan. I'm the founder of a small social enterprise called Evenhood, whose purpose it is to help people have more effective well-being conversations and uh, grow in resilience. I'm also, for three days a week, a senior leader at the Financial Conduct Authority, where I've worked for around about the past 20 years. So my mental health challenges started in 2010 where my wife and I, very sadly, experienced the stillbirth of our first child, Theo. It was an incredibly traumatic experience. Very shortly after that I started to experience three or four things. Well, one was flashbacks uh, to the tragedy itself and the second thing I experienced was uh, what the psychologists would call a hypervigilant mind. I started to anticipate that other things in life might go wrong. I was also affected in my sleep. I had muscular symptoms as well from, from the tension of all of that. So some really quite horrendous mental well-being challenges. It was quite difficult at work because uh, at first I feared there might be a bit of stigma attached to talking about it. And actually for a period of three or four years I didn't talk about it. Uh, it then came to a point where I thought I really needed treatment for what was later diagnosed as post-traumatic stress disorder. I needed work support to get that treatment. And actually I was so moved by how difficult that experience was. If as someone who'd worked there for well over a decade, best part of 15 years, and was in a senior position, if I found that a bumpy journey, I thought, what must life be like for other people who are perhaps more junior, perhaps less experienced, if they don't get the support that they need? And that's what led me to create Evenhood. People don't have the right kind of training or life experience to talk about mental well-being in the workplace. And this was my experience when I talked about my mental health. I talked about it as an illness. And I think I did that because that's what we do when we're physically ill. We might talk about having a broken leg or the flu or whatever. It turned out that I don't think that's quite the right way to get support. I actually think the person listening just finds that really emotional and medically complicated, really difficult to know what to do with. If the people listening to me had focused on what was it in the workplace that was going to make me resilient rather than ill, then they might have been able to help me better. I call it having a mentally healthy conversation and that's one that focuses on maintaining mental wellness rather than just discussing mental illness. So what I do now to maintain my mental well-being is to constantly monitor my mental well-being. I'll actually give myself a, a score um, throughout the day, every day, and to work out whether I am mentally well in whatever environment I'm in, and that's whether I'm at home or at work. I'm also very open about it. I will talk to people in the moment, and I will not just tell someone what's wrong, I will tell them how they can support me to be well at work. I have a few hobbies as well, so um, photography is the main one. I, in the financial services environment, obviously I find that's a very cerebral, intellectual type environment. Uh, and so to, to do something that involves the creative side of the brain creates a nice balance. I've also got a couple of Springer Spaniels who I love taking for a walk, but that again is, it's a sort of diversion. It's, it's taking you into a world which is very unlike the environments that might be more intellectually challenging. The advice I'd give to people who are struggling with mental health challenges, it starts with self-reflection. Looking at the environment that you're in, things like sleep and eating and exercise and personal relationships, social relationships. I ask them to raise their awareness of that, whether they're getting the right amounts and quantities of sleep, food, water and so on, exercise. People can gradually work out the things that they perhaps need to avoid a bit more or perhaps try and maintain their calmness if they can't avoid it. I do a lot of coaching for people with wellbeing challenges and I, I know that Many of them might raise the subject with a boss and the boss might not have the right training or might not have the right personal characteristics to be supportive. So I'm not adamant that you should talk, but decide whether you could talk. And if you do, talk to people about what they can do to keep you strong. And I feel that that's better advice than telling them what's wrong 
as a result of your mental illness. I've had a look at the CISI's mental health portal uh, and I really think it's a massively well curated website or portal to, to help people with their mental health challenges. It includes personal life experiences, which are always good for people to learn from. It signposts uh, so that people can get uh, help from elsewhere. It's got some practical tools in there as well, and it's got some facts and stats which help promote the need to look after mental well-being in the workplace. And it's a useful tool not just for people with the mental health challenges, it's also useful for the bosses perhaps who are trying to support members of their team with mental health challenges. So it's a really comprehensive, really well curated uh, mental health portal. really commend it to anyone to have a look at.